Comedian Sean Boyd from Just Therapy, the podcast. I got to talk to you about Detroit Auto Parts. They're the official parts store of Redline Radio. They have two convenient locations, one on the east side. You can call 216-531-7373 or the west side, 216-398-7373. Don't forget to mention Redline Radio and you receive 10% off your purchase. Make sure you hit up Detroit Auto Parts. Check them out. What's poppin', y'all? It's your girl, Shy from She Vibes, and Growing Wings Adult Services is the official sponsor of the State of the Art Studio 2. Growing Wings Adult Services have five years of experience of taking care of adults with disabilities. For more information, call Lisa at 234-334-7547. And don't forget to tune in to She Vibes on Wednesdays, 7 p.m. EST. What's going on, everybody? Lee Money here from Money's Crazy Mind. And I don't know about you guys, but I know that sometimes after my trash has been picked up, man, does my garbage can smell like, well, trash. Well, if you have the same problem that I'm having, then you can reach out to Fitz's Trash Bin Cleaning, LLC. They offer trash can cleaning and pressure washing. Fitz's Trash Bin Cleaning is locally owned, eco-friendly trash can cleaning service in Northwest Ohio serving North Ridgeville and the surrounding areas. You can reach Fitz's Trash Bin Cleaning LLC at 440-752-1533 or at their website, ftbcusa.com. Or you can email Brandon at brandon at ftbcusa.com. Or you can check them out on Facebook, ftbcusa. And of course, if you mention Redline Radio while you book a service, you receive 10% off the first service. That's an awesome deal. And don't forget to reach out to Fitz's Trash Bin Cleaning Service, LLC, today. Yo, Dave, I really appreciate you letting me do my thing over here at Redline Radio, LLC. Tim, ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Hey, well, you know I love them chicken wings. I got a couple buddies that's trying to come on and do a podcast. You got anything for them? Heck yeah, we do. Just have them give me a call. Bet. I'll have them call 440-503-0828. Tim, don't forget to tell them that we're available on all social media platforms. And you can't forget about the Redline Radio LLC app on the Google Play Store. Damn, how'd I forget about that? You was probably thinking about them little people again. Damn, I probably was. That's cool. They just trying to be a part of the winning this radio station in Cleveland. And we got the hardware to prove it. Oh, yeah. I just seen the man die on the Instagram. Shot by the cops without a weapon in his hand. I just seen the man getting choked to death. Asking for his mama with his last breath. I just seen the man getting beaten. Only crime he committed was being black while speeding. They just killed another black woman. Went into the wrong house and shot her while she was snoring. 2021, right now it's just so important. Been going on from the start, it's just now being recorded. It's clear and in our face, no longer being distorted. Everyone's a reporter, we really need some enforcement. Don't stand there and watch me die, just help me so I can live. I'm human just like you is, I got a family and kids. Because of my skin color, I'm labeled a suspect. Because of my skin color, you seeing me as a threat. I'm really just black and beautiful. I understand my dress and talk ain't your usual. Uh-huh. I'm trying to get my money up so I can move with you. That's right. You say you hate me, but what I have a do to you? Like, what I have a do to you? They say it's free speech, but I can't talk back. Uh-uh. They get nervous and they cuff a nigga off back. I forgot to use my blinker because the traffic hot. Traffic what hot. you call him backup for? It's just a traffic stop. Uh-huh. He said I look like a gang member. Okay, you look like a class, but just without the linen. I got license and insurance and it don't smell like nothing. Get out the car for what? Do I got a warrant or something? He said he wanted to search the car. I'm like, hell no. Put his gun to my head and said, get out slow. I reached for the door handle, then I heard a shot. Man, I would finish the story, but that's all I got. Beautiful. Black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. Yep, yep, yep. 
<laughs> shit, you ain't like shit. We just a little bit early, baby. We're gonna do something new now. You know, we're gonna do right now is uh, you know, start off with a beautiful video for my brother, man. But now we're gonna kick up the hour with the hour of power, aka DJ Saltiness. I'm talking about we gonna talk about it. They talk, they talk. They gonna fuck shake talk. Just as long as y'all watch what they talk about on Tay Talk at the top of the hour on the grapevine. Tay Talk, take it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck a TED Talk. It's Tay Talk, all right? What are we talking about this week? Man, it's Black History Month, so we talking about the N-word, all right? Now, I know it's, it's going to make a couple of y'all uncomfortable, you know what I mean? But, hey, we got to talk about it. White people. Y'all not allowed to say that shit. I don't give a fuck what the circumstances is. You're not allowed to say it. You actors, y'all a little bit suspect. Because when y'all be acting, y'all be saying it a little bit too fluently. You know what I mean? Like, behind closed doors, y'all y'all say that like, these niggas, you know what I mean? Like, and before y'all get mad, I know I don't, I know I look white. But I'm not white. I'm really a black man in a white man's body. It's, I know it's. So I've been you going, identify as white? Nah, I identify as black. You know what I mean? Cause, Finish up, hey, you're hey, almost out of time. If we get, if I get caught, you know what group I'm going in. You see what I'm saying? All right. Now, for those that don't believe me, my daddy black, mama white. My dad just looked like a knockoff I'll prince. Pass for that. Knock off pants. Put the booty out. Yeah, literally. Just put that, and then that's that's how you get me, all right? So, me, I say nigga whenever I want, but I can't say it wherever I want. You see what I'm saying? I got to make sure people know me, because I'll be damned if I get in a fight with somebody because they don't think they, you know what I mean? Like, how the fuck I look like explaining that? Oh, yeah, what you fighting for? This that, motherfucker ain't no I was black. You stole the thought right out of my furry head. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So it's like, let me let me let people get to know me. You well, know what I mean? Well, Before well, I just well, well, speaking of get to know you, you were sick. You had ate too much butt the weekend before last, according to that. Oh, well, you quoted that. You ate too much butt. You, yeah, exactly. You, the butt you ate went right to your tooth. Nah, that was, here you are. That now was, was, that was I was on my Lamar Odom shit. I was eating candy. <laughs> I, I, I mean, no drug, no but, butt. You know, but you know, no, no, we don't look at nobody butt man. We don't do the butt man. No but man. But now man. listen, they say you blowing up on Instagram everywhere else you're doing it, man. But we I'm happy trying, to have man. you right here. You know, you part of the dangerous crew right now. You know, we the most dangerous bunch in the whole building, man. You know. So uh why don't you tell the people where they can find you at on a day to day basis and what you be doing there? Yeah, man. Find me on Instagram so far. Uh Tay Too Funny. And uh shoot, I'm about to get on TikTok, drop the videos on TikTok. I just started last year, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Lord. Still getting started up, but yeah. And uh, can you tell us why you look like the depiction on, of Jesus Christ? That's another thing I was gonna say. My dad is <laughs> my dad is an OG light skin. You know what I mean? You know man, the light skins listen, that used to man, get made fun of right, because they was man. light skin. That's R- my dad. Rubber dub dub. Thanks for the uh, that's what I'll be. What you hear now? Oh, we yeah, appreciate sure. you, man. Thank you, and uh, everybody, make sure y'all follow Tay Talk, man. Take too funny on Instagram, man. My brother go crazy, man. Sure. Plus, man, he got up there and did his comedian thing on the stand up thing, man. So, watch my light skin friend, man. He's more than uh, uh, what are you? Never mind. Never mind. I'm ultra, ultra light, light skin. skin. <laughs> <laughs> Almost a crime. Light we skin. on an ultra so, light beam. We on an ultra light beam. With the rhyme light skin, he's one of the ones at the stoplight. When it's just you and him, but he got the fast car and you over there high with the gun and all that shit. He was like, great. I'm going to race him. <laughs> I got that from Dave Chappelle, yeah, but that's sure. funny as fuck, though. Hey, you the one white friend that we need, but you just as much as the nigga is when we need him. Hey, for real. And that's what the hard ain't at the ER. You understand? <laughs> 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 Anyhow, man, talk about yourself, man, just for one second. Shoot, man. Damn. What's your favorite Tay Talk? Uh, shoot, my favorite Tay Talk is probably uh, it's probably about fucking. It's probably how. <laughs> it's probably, Talk about it, cause we got man. fucked till we got stuck. Fuck till you stuck in twenty twenty three. Man, it's it's more about the, it's more about the females. You know what I mean? Like, how come they can't give us what what we do? I'm talking about how come they can't ride for more than five minutes? But I gotta go. 30 goddamn minutes 
no break, no nothing. You must have had some honey. Like, no, no honey needed. No honey needed. No honey needed. I, I, did, I, just, I did just start hearing about that, though. Oh, you got to start adding that. But yeah, no, nah, that's a... Uh, yeah, you guys got to check that one out. You know what I mean? I did my first stand-up probably about when we go. It was probably like two months ago. Yeah, I'll take a look at my man. Shut out the... Uh, yeah, I got to get back on that. We was all out there. That was a nice night, especially up, uh, your little friend. That was a funny night. We was out in the <laughs> middle of yeah. nowhere. Baby, we went out there to do the comedy shit out there in the middle of nowhere. I was like, hey, man, stay here. Stay <laughs> And then we got out there playing Larry June. It was like, you could be fly some. No. I didn't think we was going to get out. <laughs> Not at all. I was like, nigga, wrong turn, Virginia. It looked like wrong. I was trying to get, to get out. Yeah, but then when we got out, it was cool, though. Baby, out there with, uh, with, uh, with, with Kevin Ford fell asleep with his car, like you always do. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot where that was. Kevin that was Ford. way out there. But that, it, that it was just crazy. Like, it see, looked like hey, we, uh, hey, we was in the Michael Myers like town. Canton. Man, no, oh, no bullshit. Yeah. Don't you blame it on Canton. It was outside of Canton. Yeah. Way it was like the country outside, outside of yeah, Canton. Like it, it was, it was of way Canton. out there, man. But yeah, you did your thing out there, man. And they fuck with you, too. Yeah. Tell me so welcome. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about some Tay Talks. To the left, because we don't have that much time. Um, you just supposed to start to the right. But Tim, Tim, Timmy. How the hell? You, I wanted to do like a pentagram. I'll see you guys later. It <laughs> <laughs> has been an episode of The Grapevine. <laughs> Why don't you try hosting? <laughs> uh, that mistake was brought to you by these here messages. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Tim. <laughs> Great. Make the laugh track behind that so I don't sound like that at all. <laughs> She's right. Tim, what's going on? <laughs> Not much, man. I'm uh I think I'm with my boy Al Drove here. Mm-hmm. I gotta go now. I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> no ain't nobody going no goddamn weird. Hey, light skin, close it up. <laughs> you say bright scan. <laughs> yeah, I leave. Man, was- no, but I'm good, bro. You know, yeah. just doing me, man. Yeah. About to about to t- take my business off crazy. How's it going? How's it going? My bad. Yeah. My bad. My he bad. said he glow back. He, he glow black. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm talking about he the ultra light skin though, but he Jose Canseco, Ricky Henderson mix. Yeah. You feel right. me? But uh, oh well, Tim, you got a whole bunch of cool shit that either just didn't happen, recently happened, or about to happen for you in a few days. Yeah, I accept it either way. Well, do you want to start with any of them, or do you want to like tell the people where they can find you at? Or, uh, well, you can find me on Ten Buck Tuesday every Tuesday from six to eight here at Redline Radio LLC. Uh, you can also catch me on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, TikTok. Ten Buck Two underscore thirty one. Uh, it's Black History Month, so you know I'm posting something for Black History every day this month. Yes, we are. Shout out to Bree. Yes, the one. Um, it's just it's something I do for 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 my aunt. So she would have me do. She had me write a report every day. So I'm just writing that report for her. Shout out to the AT who made you write that report. <laughs> Shout out Justin George for watching and Lisa. Hey, hey talking about these balls. Listen, I JG. didn't have enough money for everything else, but I got these wrinkles to take care of. Dave, and we love you, Lisa. That's my balls. I don't want to talk about. Anyhow, everything is uh, smoothed out. Your balls? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? See, I don't want to talk. Pause. <laughs> they smooth as eggs. <laughs> <laughs> these are beautiful. What are these velvet? <laughs> I introduce these shits into the smooth balls. You can't even say with the TH, it has to be like a V. Mm. Smoothest, smoothest balls. Anyhow, we'd like to thank uh, Growing Wings Adult Services for making this happen. Okay, I'm probably going to get fired for that. And if y'all laugh, y'all going to hell. <laughs> Anyhow, so what we're going to do is we're going to. Uh, I believe he's trying to make panty oh. crabs. 
Mr. Ball Man over there. It reminded me of my balls. <laughs> my brother who just walked in here fashionably late. He don't need no <laughs> He's the man who don't need to be on time because hey. he has everything on rhyme. That's on the one, two. He really have to be good. My, my no, apologies. Just, oh, no need to apologize. Yeah. Just maximize, baby, and tell the people who it is and what you can do to whisper in their eardrum. Hallelujah. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm fashionably late because I got mama dues. Mama yeah, my mom wanted me to, you know, take off the carpet. Nah, you ain't going to get hey. whipped for that. Don't hey. tell me nothing. Yeah. We all get whipped if you know about it, man. Hey, listen, I got to I gotta make sure I get the mama dues. You know what I mean? She fresh retired. She got a whole list of stuff. <laughs> for you to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for you to do. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, don't bring that Absolutely. Over here. Absolutely. Yes, but um, you know what? I feel fresh tonight. You and know, you I, feel, fresh, I feel brother. I feel good. Well, thank you. You, you know, look fresh, brother. You I feel fresh. It's, it's a good, you know, good, we, beautiful night. Yeah, we like having you around here, man. You kind of feel like a like a Michael Jackson love. Mm. OJ Simpson. Mm. I'm a shiny accessory. <laughs> <laughs> you must quit type of love. You know, Plus, you know what? The reason why I love being here is because mostly me. Yes. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Because I'm serious all day and I get to put my hair down with my bald head. Later on that night when we get on this show, so there you go. With yeah, this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. My, you know, my wife sent you for me. I'm the light side of your darkness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good comparison. That's a really good comparison. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I don't yeah. even know how to come back with a sanctified like a, in the name of Yeshua. And then this nigga prays for me after that. I don't even know. <laughs> First of all, I'm trying to figure Hallelujah. Out how your dark side. That means like. Are you, uh, ain't nobody here for you, Otis type of light? Or you don't, don't hit her again? Hey, listen, ain't nobody else talking about you know no pentagrams. Anyhow, <laughs> 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 uh, man, was, man, listen, why don't you do me a favor? And so we here on a mission, man. We on a mission to say these lies, man. Absolutely. So, ain't no pentagrams, ain't no uh, scissor, ain't none of them per- 10s, 5s, 30s, 35, 40s. Absolutely. None of that, man. We trying to get here and show y'all some cool shit going on that you can be a part of. Absolutely. You just got to take your time and let somebody out there know that you like, you know, you want somebody to fuck with you or, you know, even if you don't want to say it, say it. Right. Absolutely. Make well, here's the beautiful word. thing. You know, um, tell them. That's your uh, we are uh, um, during the day uh, an agency, a, a, a non for profit that you know are doing things for mental health with children empowerment. Uh, the name of the right, uh, I mean, excuse me, the non for profit is Right of Passage Nation. Um, the non for profit started in Florida, now we're bringing it to Ohio. And I gotta admit, you know, being here only a month, things are flying. You know, so the support is amazing. You know that you know that things are going to be great. When you got, you know, black and white and Asian and Spanish people working together for the same cause to be able to do stuff, and you ain't got to ask people twice to help. Hey, Tim, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Smart is boy. Smart is boy. He said every nationality is willing to help because you know why? Every nationality deals with this problem. Absolutely. And everybody overlooks it, and it's a real thing. And, you know, um, I don't mean to cut you off, brother. No, no, I, I feel like I'm about to give you some tissue. That's- no, <laughs> no, hey, listen, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. We are the world. We are the world. We are the children. We are the children. <laughs> and for 35 cents a week, you too can buy some oatmeal. <laughs> Shit, he pulled out a voice. I thought I was talking. I'm about to whoop your ass. Yeah. <laughs> No, for real though, I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Nationalities coming together for one cause: mental health, depression, yeah, like, anxiety, no, no children. Matter, no matter what, everybody deals with this. Everybody suffers. This, like, but nobody wants to talk about it because one or two things is going on. Either it's like you don't believe it because they just don't seem like they're. You can't tell nobody whether or not they're depressed. You have to. They're crying out for help. Right. You can tell who wastes some time. We want to get to it. Even if he can tell who wasting some time and want to get to it, tend to them both sides the same. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we in the business of saving lives. and uh, Absolutely. You know, like. Absolutely. Go ahead, man. I just want to hear some more about you. Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm, yeah, a, I'm an author. Uh-huh. I wrote a book called Manipulator. 
Killing Your Weakness Monsters and the Things That Controls You. You can get that on Amazon. If you say it again, I'm going to disappear in the share. Like, uh, <laughs> manipulator. That's manipulation and lying at the same time. <laughs> and the worst part is when you're manipulating lie to yourself. You know, the lies you tell that you believe. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, you can get that on Amazon. Manipulator spelled hot sound. You know, people, uh, manip you liar absolutely probably be telling <laughs> some of my secrets yeah <laughs> <laughs> well tonight we're gonna do the show a little bit different we're gonna watch the, um a presentation good but what is you eating because this sounds delicious in my headphones <laughs> <laughs> all that extra oh, smack you know what I'm saying? <laughs> smack delicious baby <laughs> you sound like ll cool j with two pounds of chapstick you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, it's Tay Tonk. <laughs> but this is Tay Man, listen. I probably shouldn't do that. Huh? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. It's the homie Bree Best Bites. Watching right now. I'm Bree's Best Bites. 216 XL. <laughs> there it is. Oh, well. <laughs> so, anyhow, there are a lot of things that they teach us in uh, school, you know, when it comes to to like, you know, February, uh, maybe February. February. Especially the beginning of February. I'm talking about all 28, maybe 28 of them days. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, 29 not next even. year. Maybe, yeah, maybe. We yeah, got maybe. weekends. You know what I'm so <laughs> what are some of the most famous things that you guys have heard about? Even some of the most infamous things i'm talking about the most far-fetched things that you guys have heard that make you want to be like you know what we rebels ebony start with you about black history uh slavery okay you cia who absolutely the cia pertaining you <clears throat> cocaine <laughs> oh, you've been watching Snowfall. Correct. Shout out to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Algernet Rowe. Ricky Ross. Ricky Rose. Uh -huh. yeah. AKA Freeway. AKA look like he's standing right next to you who might could ask you for a hit. Hey. Timbuktu, <laughs> AKA every what it Tuesday through February. My man's in there. Wait a minute. I ain't say my stuff. Okay. I just said. Yeah, what he, he was, was talking just, about with yeah, the cocaine. Green, yeah. Absolutely. You know how the CIA, Oliver North, and all of them started bringing yeah, the dope into the country yeah. and got Ricky Ross to sell it and the blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. Oh, we ain't going to talk about that. They, but they, yes. No, I mean, they was flying that. They was flying that over into uh, Mena, Arkansas with uh, Bill Clinton. That's how the two little boys got sh killed down there and the wrestling dude, WWF cuz. And that's yeah, why you crazy. understand why the Bloods and Crips didn't start in California, but started where? No, they started in California. Do some do some homework. No, you know, it's no, so crazy. No. Look at the colors and look at the flag. We, we though, started you know in mean? California, then we look went the there next. Flag. Gang banging Democrat. out there was next. I mean, Dem Democrats, yeah, gang banging out there was next. Like, you yeah, probably gang banging right. Little Rock was next. Well, they went out to Little right. Rock to get the rock, bring it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm gonna give you a brief history lesson in African American history month. Woo, woo, woo. So basically, what happened was, at this point in time. William Jefferson Clinton, a.k.a. Uh, Billy, was the governor of Arkansas. And Big Bill, a.k.a. Uh, Little Bill Daddy. I'm a was, Bill. Yeah, that's him. He was, you know, top dog in charge. So what he did, he said, hey, man, listen, let us fly all the cocaine, all the valuable drugs and shit into your airfield, sir. And just look the other way, look the other way, look the other way, Billy. And then when it's your turn, Billy, we're going to make sure it's your turn, Billy. Please don't kill me, Billy. God damn, we go, we go we fucking around and die behind this shit. Anyhow, now you're on the grapevine. Damn, bro. Just as fast as I you can. can. I can't. I can't. Damn. He's gone. He's gone. I walk fast. Anyhow, man, listen, man. That shit right there, Bill Clinton. Big Bush asked Bill Clinton, hey, let me run the dope into your house. Lil Clinton, and then Bill Clinton said, okay, come on with it. When it's your turn, we're going to call you up to be the president. He said, come on. Boom. They started running all the dope through me in Arkansas. Not only was they running dope, they was running dope with a police escort. 
from the Arkansas police, then they was running that straight to Ricky Ross. And that's and then they was providing uh the contras, all them Nicaraguan contras, they was paying for all of that stuff. All them dudes had machine guns, Uzis, little Uzi verse, machine gun Kellys. <laughs> <laughs> Am I did I say something wrong? No, you you, you, you said it all. We right. listening, we listening, brother. We Keep going. Yeah. Go. Well, Hallelujah! Is that what you needed to hear? No, no, no. But, but that's common knowledge. What I want to do is spit some of this common knowledge that's not so common, or that other people ain't never had a chance to bless. You know, I'm here to bless your eardrums and plus your eyeballs too. If you just open up and give me a few, can you? Can you... Absolutely. Yeah, we with you, brother. Push the goddamn button. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the presentation, fuckers. <laughs> When somebody else knows more about yourself than you know of yourself, then you have volunteer slavery all over again. The real reason why I believe black people truly won't fight back with white folks is because of religion. In our mind, we keep forgiving white people because in our head, subliminally, we see Jesus. The thing about being conscious and truthful is you got to be tough. You got to be ready to get violent because people are always going to try to take advantage of you because if you're winning, they're losing. And those guys cheat and you don't. So you got to be, they got to know not to play with you. They got to know you got, you can't really think that you're just going to have an opinion without some muscle. The entire civilization is built on keeping the black man and the black woman apart. Right now, every white population in the world is at minus birth rate. Every single one. All right. What are they going to do then? They need our bodies. In the 60s, they banned martial artists. They had registration of people's hands and feet because it was something they didn't quite understand. And plus, when people came from the armed forces and started using karate, it was dangerous at that time. You know, we're suffering from like high blood pressure and swollen ankles and everything. Like, like what fight are we gonna take on? People be like, yo, black power, put your boots on this white man's neck. And I'd be like, man, you can't even strap your boots because your ankles are swollen. You can't even wear boots. In neighborhoods that are of a more upscale, financially affluent society, white, Jewish, etc., they are infused with fertility clinics. While in our societies, the ones that do not have that elevated level of economics, black and brown impoverished communities have abortion clinics. Processed foods have to be preserved and you only preserve that which is dead. The fear of the little white girl taking down her new kids on the block poster and putting Easy e up over her bedroom set was something that had to be addressed. Africans have defended territory, defended ideals, and defended themselves consistently over thousands of years, including in the United States. To be a successful colonizer, you not only colonize and you dominate the people physically, you have to dominate them psychologically. The first revolution, Gil Scott Heron tells us, is the revolution in the mind. African people, we've not been a warring people. African that was something people. that had to be cultivated with African culture because we've been such a humane people Georgia. and a giving people. We've had an abundance. So we didn't have an ideology of attacking people and taking what they had because we had everything in Africa. So a war culture had to be cultivated, especially in places like Kemet, because that was the gateway to Africa. So the war culture was really developed there as far as African people. For almost 3,000 years worth of history before Africans ever lost a battle. But when presented in a public school system and in, among our kids, it's presented as if we were always the losers and that our existence on the plantation in the United States is sort of the beginning of our existence. The mentalities develop differently. Europeans are traditionally xenophobic, which means they are uh, wary of strangers, whereas African people are xenophilic, where, you know, if you see a stranger, you would embrace them and welcome them in, which has been to our detriment in many ways. But we have to understand how people who live in a desert are actually able to cultivate more food than anywhere else in the region. 
And so some of those peoples actually said that Kemet was the breadbasket of the region. So much uh, uh, food and agriculture was successfully produced that they could have a standing army very, very early on. To have a standing army, it means that you don't have to have everyone in the fields. Okay, so basically now what we're watching is we have a civilization that's so dope and so powerful that they can have a standing army, which basically means, to your understanding, what, Al Gennaro? A standing army basically means that you have an army that is all to itself while civilization is able to continue. Absolutely. Meaning that you're able to have your artisans, you're able to have this and that, yes. your bacon, eggs, rice, and flowers for your boo-boo. Now, uh, carry on. Go ahead. Well, I mean, it, it's just, it, when the guy said that, um, first of all, what I hate is when certain people attribute certain attributes to Africans based on what white people brought them, taught them, or gave them, which is not true. African warfare is history. It's 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 who we are as a people, you know, throughout generations and generations since the, beten- the beginning of civilization, which is African. You see what I'm saying? Um, the Moors of Morocco, they've never been enslaved. They've they actually were the ones that believed in going to other lands and different things and teaching people different things, you know? So, so can I ask you a question? Are you like familiar with like the term martial arts coming from something prior to like the, like God of Mars fighting? Yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar. Okay, so like, <clears throat> that's what we get into next. Um, just be, wait, the, the thing is, is, is just because you gave something a title, a Greek name, uh-huh. doesn't mean that it didn't exist prior to. Right. You see what I'm saying? I, I talked to somebody not too long ago and I asked him, do you know when Tai Chi was invented? He said the 1700s. I said, oh, no, no. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> No, just because you understand Tai Chi in the Asiatic fa- fashion or factor of life doesn't mean that it was just, you know, invented then. Yeah. Tai Chi has been around. It's A lot of things in the world comes from Africans. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Other races come from Africans. You know, all you are is a mutated African from being in a different region or area for 19 generations and it's scientifically proven. That's why I taste so light skin. Now, he can take his shirt off in no, the wintertime. No, no, when it comes to Africa. <laughs> nah, I ain't, like I said, long yeah, like I'm a stand-up. Like, in fact, no, nah, hell no. You stay away from my wife and your titty and your yeah, fingers and your coat. pension. Uh, yo, I'm, I'm going to say something about these. I'm just kidding, though. No, of course it's all mine. But I'll tell him that. Okay, so um, how much into African or African-American or any kind of like, uh, does anybody like looking at comic books or reading comic books or any of that stuff? Like absolutely. Ant-Man and them? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, yeah. So how many of those, what we read or what we perceive to be a comic book or a comic book strip or something dope as fuck that we never ever even imagined in our era, like uh, Spider-Man, Batman, Robin, all those people, how many of those people would you actually think were based off of black people or Africans? A majority. Out of 10. Just say uh, out of 10, how many? Ten. Eight. No. Uh, Some all, people got imagination. And for you, white men? All, all 10. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's crazy. I always fuck with Stan Lee. I, I knew that he's uh, he made Spider-Man off of like somebody. Like It was just supposed to be like Man, he got Spider-Man bit by he got anybody. bit by a mutated motherfucking hey, COVID cockroach. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Out of all of them, I think Spider Man was original. Stan <laughs> Lee thought, and that's why Spider Man is his favorite. But when it comes to like a lot of the other ones, you know, like Thor or Sp- Superman or all these yeah. different people, you know, those came from different attributes. Um, Would you like to name Superman. something that you know off the top of your head? Well, I just named Superman. Well, you know? okay, no, he's so, in DC though. No, no matter what. <laughs> oh, he's hero. a DC comic. Yeah, yeah. that's not. That's but even not the formula, Stanley. even the even the formula of when they created the Black Panther, you know, the Black Panther was created so that it could take the the focus off of the actual Black Panthers in California, who were starting their own particular, you know, welfare system and and lunch, you know, systems for school children and whatnot. So, you know, everything that they've made or they've done, it's always come or spun from something dealing with a black culture. So let me ask you a question. Let me stop y'all right there. And before we get into the next presentation, 
I'm going to just ask everybody. I'm going to say one name. I don't want to hear nothing. Just yes, uh, hero. Yes, black man. We're going to go around the table. Sorry with Ebony. Hannibal. Yes, hero. Yes, black man. Which one? Black man. You, Hannibal. Yes, hero. Yes, black man. Go. I just learned about him because I watched that video. So he's a black man. And God damn it. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah, nah. It's like, uh, I don't think the race really matters. <clears throat> we just wait, see. wait, watch. I'm, I'm messing with you though, but I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say hero because, and, and here's the reason why. Even, even, even though you know, uh, Greeks and and different people have tried to whitewash them. If you Google them right now and look on Wikipedia, you'll probably see like a closer to white looking person. Um, Hannibal was jet ass black. Well, and, we're about to get into that. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, but, we, but yes, I, I, you know, you can't. I can't pick one over the other because of what he did and the fashion of what he did it. No matter what race he was, was boss. Yeah, yeah and yeah. for his people, he most definitely was a hero. Hey, Mr. CJ Star, my brother Bree, how you doing, brother? Hey, man, make some of the snacky cakes for the wacky cakes. Uh, get your Bree cakes from Bree cakes. Uh, Bree's best bites, two one six, all up in the eardrums. All right, so listen, what we're going to do right now is we're going to look at a little presentation. Try not to go nowhere. I'm about to put you on some good shit. That you, look, look for it on uh, Google, uh, uh, Amazon Prime, uh, Netflix, and chill. You ain't going to find none of that shit here. None of this. Let me learn you something. Can you please? Go ahead, fool. To have a standing army, it means that you don't have to have everyone in the fields. You can actually produce enough that some people can be the artists. Some people can be the philosophers and the priests. And yes, definitely some people can be an army. The people who built Egypt came from the South and the West, Southeast and the West. And so Egypt became the phenomena it was because of the perfection of ecology, the right blend of silt from the floods and the river and the time of year and the temperature they were able to produce an abundance of crop so they can create surplus food. But if you can create surplus food, then people can settle down and go into craft and arts and sciences and other things. And so that made Egypt or Kemet a phenomenon. I, I think your European society has always been violent and it's always been hyper aggressive. If you look at the wars between the British and the Scots or the British and the Irish, they were all there was always savagery even within their own population. So as a culture, this group uh, has just been extremely violent. Tariq got his ethnic group. I've got my ethnic group. We got an issue. Me and you didn't go on the battlefield and slaughter one another. You sent your hero. I send my hero. And here goes Whoever Rick. Hero interesting. Wins, that's the winner. 10,000 people isn't left dead on the ground. That's not a war culture. But in 4200 BC, we uh, were attacked by the Europeans for the first time in ancient Kemet, uh, or in Tyseti, or in Tymeri, before it was ancient Kemet. And um, what we have to understand is that that battle ended in an African win. When people come, you know, we wanted to share. We wanted to teach. We wanted to give them what we had, make them, you know, aware of what we knew. And we didn't know we were dealing with some savages, some animals who would come back as a beast and destroy us and rape our women and kill our children and uh, suppress and repress our men. And so there's already North Africans have been forced into a military posture because of these invasions of the Greeks, invasions of the Romans, the invasion of the Visigoths and the occupation of North Africa. They breed a new kind of African culture in Northwest Africa. And out of that culture arises a Hannibal, who's militarily trained, who grows up in a culture that is a militaristic culture. And then he strikes out to remove the enemy from his land. No. And he goes further than that. He crosses Check into Europe, through tone. Spain, through France, coming in through the back of Italy, trying to crush the Roman Empire. So watch the Europeans, they've always tried to Europeanize African 
um, figures like Hannibal. They've always tried to make Hannibal into a European. As a matter of fact, I saw something recently. They were trying to do the same thing with Mansa Musa. We all know that Mansa Musa was a West African king of Mali, who's the richest man ever recorded. And I saw something in a textbook recently that had him white. So with Hannibal, his military genius was something that they don't want to attribute to the African people, but he was an African man. Hannibal was African. There are coins that will show you what Hannibal looked like, and on the back are the elephants that he brought into warfare with him. Hannibal Barker, see, one thing I, I enjoy is how they always try to take the most prominent, powerful, effective generals, warriors uh, that we have in our history, and they try to manipulate it and Europeanize it because then it gives them some level of culture to themselves, even though they've had to adopt and pretty much steal virtually everything that they claim to be their own. So with Hannibal Barca being a Carthaginian, a North African, not a European, you really have to stretch a lie to say that Hannibal Barca was a European. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine taking an elephant down the block and hearing that a general takes elephants over a mountain range is absolutely almost unheard of today. But this is the kind of thing that we should expect Africans to be able to do. Europeans could. So in case we lost some of y'all, we didn't want most of y'all. <laughs> y'all can go ahead and get on for you and spit on because y'all probably don't even understand the concept of taking a cab down the street because y'all used to taking Ubers. If you missed that, you probably can't tell uh, the time on a goddamn analog clock. But anyhow, <laughs> This man is saying that this man was so great. I mean, if you could just understand, I'm a history, I'm a history buff. First of all, I love history. A lot of this stuff is being hidden from us, which makes us lose contact or lose identity with exactly who and how powerful as people that we are. You got to understand the type of vibration you have to have with the universe or the planet or the dude. You can't hardly get that raggedy ass goddamn uh, Buick Saber that you just bought with your income taxes to make it around that man curve. They ain't got that money yet, so ain't nobody got no. Car. Then don't let Ebony <laughs> Rich get you that car. She gonna put. Boop. <laughs> we know about the boop button fucking around with Ebony. Oh, she yeah, gonna take that tax tra- money. I've been chasing yes, cars yep, all week. Yep, <laughs> yep. She gonna say she just like the rent center man. Mm, yeah. You want to put this uh sixty seven dollars down on this uh eighty inch TV for uh nine hundred ninety seven months at uh two hundred and twenty bucks, <laughs> and that's empty. Boy, if the TV didn't come on, it wouldn't have to come on. But anyhow, you know they don't tell us these things. How dope we are with dude. Imagine this: this man taking a whole. What do they call a bunch of elephants? What's that? Herd. Herd. I heard oh, that. Shit. It was on it. The bright man. Like, God shit. damn, my like, oh. man. Herd. <laughs> These niggas playing hey, check. They can't wait for me to say something wrong. You asked. It was my we birthday answered. last, nigga. Not yours. I just want to thank Berea for that education. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was that was a white education for real. <laughs> Uh, YouTube, you need to thank them too. Oh, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> YouTube University. Mm-hmm. So listen, picture this. Picture both of y'all. Let's say y'all want to walk around Berea because y'all graduated, or y'all, you know, and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna I ain't graduated at Berea. We already know. I'm talking about these. Uh, you know what? <laughs> we do walk around with the elephants, mm. like Ghost Ride the Whip. Mm. How hard do y'all think it would be to Ghost Ride the Whip? If I was raised with them, you know what I'm saying? If I was raised with elephants, it ain't going to be hard at all. Nope. You see what I'm saying? People only fear what they don't know. If I was raised with it, I know it. And the thing is, 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 is say, for example, you know, you got generation upon generation upon generation. One of the things that, that um, humans have learned is from nature. We know how to eat certain berries because of what nature eats. We know how to eat certain nuts or fruits or how to dig for certain things that are edible because we watch nature. We get some of our dance styles, some of our traditions, some of our rituals, some of our fighting styles from watching nature. So if we came up and grew with elephants, what what do I have to fear? Well, I'm glad you, know you said I mean? that. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Excellent point. Let's go on, go on to the next one. Bye, mama. We be back. <laughs> <laughs> mama. Mama. 
Mama, back up just a little bit. There we, there we go. Whoop. That we should expect Africans to be able to do. Europeans could not deal with those African elephants. For a long time, Europeans couldn't train African elephants. So Hannibal couldn't have been a European dealing with those African elephants. In fact, they had training camps for those elephants in Africa that they would train in ancient Africa. In fact, with when it comes to African elephants, the first time the European got African elephants in captivity was in the 1860s when they brought over Jumbo and had him in the Ringling Brothers Circus. And that was a real big deal to them That's because it was the first Dumbo. time they had an African elephant that they could train. So, and then Walt Disney did the Dumbo movie yeah, based on Jumbo. Movie. So that was a big thing, getting an African elephant. So they definitely did not deal with those African elephants back then. Weaponizing animals is something very specific because, for instance, with the Watch elephant, this. okay, the I'll elephant having heavy, thick skin, also being very knowledgeable and having a long memory, a long, well standing memory of its own environment Pause. or other environments. You gotta find it again. <laughs> no, he don't. No, he better not have. Stuff. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you gotta find it again. How about maybe about six months in the, uh, ago in the news, they were having a funeral. And the elephant came and fucked the funeral up. Yep. Uh -huh. Then came back and doubled back and doubled back for the double back and hit everybody else. Where do you guys think the battle tank came from? Go ahead, push that button. Elephants that are the button. smartest animals. Uh, from a very young they age. double back for the they double back with the double back and a pop pop. They would put shields on the front, on the top, uh, and they would have that as what we know today as the tank. Okay, that came from the elephant, the actual hide, its body, its tusk, everything. If you look at a tank, you see the way it's shaped. It looks Shout like an elongated snout of a elephant. After the hike sauce is thrown out after 300 plus years, we get about 100 years of trying to repair and restructure our place, 150 years. Then we get invaded again by another group called the Hittites. Well, they stayed here about 60 years or so. We drive those crazies out. But then we get invaded by them again, 75 years later. Each one of these invasions is causing damage to our infrastructure and is forcing us to change our posture from a humane approach to defense to now almost a criminal. Because now we're going out and kick your ass, okay? We are not taking the shit no more. We're coming out there after you. First of all, the reason they changed the name from Montu to Marshall was when the Europeans decided that they wanted to name martial arts after the god Mars, the Roman god Mars. The martial arts actually means uh, we follow the way of fighting of Mars on the walls inside of Governor Amenemont's tomb. You see evidence of African people I know, fighting you know about. on the walls, you know, and, and also doing the artistic things and the exercises and things of that nature. So one of the things that I think is important is that it was actually 1,200 years later that the, Euro that the Europeans, the Romans, even came with the god Mars. So 1,200 years after the writing appears, then you have the god Mars, but yet they named the fighting after him. So, Capoeira is um, from the... All right, so basically right now what's going on is stepping into a whole portion of history that you guys probably have never been privy to, never even thought about pertaining to our people and the people related to us. Who would have known that these arts and these martial arts and these other moves and like my brother Al Gennaro said, these very much emulating animals that they seen in the jungle and that they seen fighting the giraffe. I mean, even if you watch a few a Kung Fu movie like uh, Wu-Tang, they was the crane, the elephant, the hippopotamus. That's the giraffe true. with the goddamn habit. That, oh, oh, the nigga always owe people money. Remember him? Huh? Anyhow, they emulated these animals. And some of the bad, listen, this goes on way before any of these cats came along. You got to understand. They, if you look at the hieroglyph, the, 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 uh, the hieroglyphic shit. The, hieroglyphics. Hey, man, don't come on my show judging me, Jack. <laughs> I don't need to judge security. First, she came with the herd. Now, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, she, if we gonna say it, we gonna say she, it she, right. If she say one she more word, I want her out of she here at once. My contract says me, huh? <laughs> Hi, baby. I was just 
people can hear us and look at this dude. This is what they see. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they don't see exactly what they see. <laughs> this is what we're looking at. <laughs> Anyhow, so what we're going to do is we're going to watch some more. And I we're tell see... you, I am the one who discovered Wakanda. And I have the lion. <laughs> he say, bring the lion. He carry his lion. And he's from the Vallejo. Man. That man's from Vallejo. Man, Samosa? The man on the screen right now is from Vallejo. Oh, yeah, that nigga from Vallejo. Yeah, I thought you were talking about Mansa Moose. So I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he wasn't from Vallejo. You've been to Cali with me one too many times, nigga. Go ahead, push play. Angola, Check a look. They called it the Kumene Angola. And Angola loosely translates as a zebra dance. Different martial arts forms from different cultures always uh, copied the animals. And this was a particular animal that uh, the Kumene Angola was fashioned after. Every African society has a martial arts. And you see on the tomb of Kemet, you see almost all of the movements of Tai Chi. Yet Tai Chi has not been born yet as Tai Chi for thousands of years. You see all of the wrestling formats of ancient Greece and the wrestling formats we use right now in the Olympics on the walls of the tombs of ancient Kemet. When you start talking about some of the things that our ancestors did, such as the ways they encircled different groups of people when they would come in to fight us, the ways that they fought underwater, um, the uh, the one of the things that the Zulu people did that they I you know understand was handed down to them from some of the folks who uh, from ancient Kemetic people was learning these alligator moves underwater so that when the enemy troops would try to cross through the water they wouldn't even know it but we would be underwater waiting for them. You remember the, the group out of South Africa called Black Mombasa, the music group, and they did a piece with Paul Simon. And you remember at one point, the leader of Black Mombasa was murdered. They put a tire around his neck and they killed him. And, and people were asking, why did they kill him? They, they had just finished that piece with Paul Simon. The piece hadn't come out yet. But when you see the piece, when it comes out, he's doing an African martial arts form on the sand dunes to the tombs that him and Paul was doing. But he hadn't been authorized to take something Stop from right an there. African secret society. Now, if you understand what's going on, this man is practicing a particular defense, offense, fighting style, ritualistic type of self-defense that had not been seen in the Western civilization. And he didn't have the authorization. We're going to go around the board. Does this sound like anybody else in history to anybody here at the table starting with Ebony? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Algenero? Re uh, repeat the question. So, basically, I want to I wanna make sure I understand what he's saying. I didn't <laughs> understand it either. That's why I like <laughs> well, No. Okay, so basically what's going on right now no, no, no. Okay, so the the, the there's there's, there's a, there there is a guy that was with Paul Simon. Yes, Paul Simon had did a song in Africa. Yes, he was showing people through the Gas dance moves, moves the, a, shit, a, a, the stuff a, that a, they did. A, but the guy also said that in the in the um, tradition of the the dance moves, I gave away a fighting style was of a secret society. Yes. Okay. Okay. So what my question was. Does this sound like somebody who died for something? Because if you heard after that, they tied a, a, a tire around his neck and drowned him and killed him. Does this sound like anybody else to another story you might have heard in this type of tradition, in this type of fighting style, in this type of culture, in any type of fighting style? Who died behind teaching another culture a fighting style? Well, there's several people, but the one you're probably talking about is Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. But there, there's other people because you got to remember anytime you talk about giving away tradition or you're talking about secret society knowledge, you know, and you got people that's going around that you, you're talking about a, a, a brotherhood, you, not not just you're talking about the tradition of a culture, but you're talking about a brotherhood. You know, the thing with Masons, they don't care who a Mason is, if a Mason is in help or of, of need or whatever, you know, they're going to come to the rescue. So if you got people going around talking about or giving away things that they had to believe for in order for them to have, you know, some type of honor. You know, it's, it's like people going around and even just with fraternities. Let, let yourself go around, talk about some Omega type stuff that only Omegas do, secret handshakes or whatnot, and see if you don't get Omega Stomp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Speaking of Omega Stomp, continue to watch into the next hour. 
you continually get Omega Stomp with my brother Al Gennaro. But right now, what we're going to do is take you to the top of the hour and let Tay talk about what Tay talk about. Tay, talk about it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Man. You know what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about something that I just went through uh, Andre's birthday. We're going to talk about drunk people. Oh, huh, I was there. <laughs> Man, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you guys saw what was going on. But I saw somebody uh from my uh from my brother's well from Berea from from my school. But he was in my brother's grade. Older dude, you know what I'm saying? He was drunk. You from Berea? Yeah. Ain't that something? What what year did you graduate? Nineteen sixty-two. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> what's your what's your father's name? Vaughn. Who? Vaughn. Folks. Vaughn. Oh, I know Vaughn. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I know your daddy. Yeah. I know your daddy, boy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You say it like that, too. I know your daddy, boy. <laughs> Actually, you know what? He's younger than me, though. Y- your father's how old? He's like 60. Oh, he's older than me. Yeah. I don't know. I might not know Vaughn. You, you calm your old ass down. You might me. know <laughs> Skip. You might know Skip or Oh, uh, I know Skip. Beanie. Yeah. Skip. Yeah. Rusty. Wilson. No, nah, Skip. Uh... Did you say crusty? Y'all went Rusty. from a story to, to who we know. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hey, no no what she doing it's okay. I ain't been home in a while. What she doing it's okay. When I do it, it's a problem. Yeah, no, skip. That's what I'm talking about. When yeah, I do it, it's cool. Them. When yeah. I do it, they don't like it. That's what I'm talking about. The five deadly venoms. He used to always be doing that How snake shit. Go? Oh, but uh, my bad, my bad, but uh, <laughs> but about the drunk people, about the drunk people. Oh shit, <laughs> man! All right, so I'm at the bar. First thing the dude does, yo, he daps me up. Motherfucker touches my head. You know what I mean? I don't even like. I don't like people <laughs> touching my face. You know, what I mean? it, it, it don't touch my hair. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lot fucking with this hair. You know what I'm saying? So I immediately just back up, like, bro, what did you? And then he get like, I could tell he gets salty about that. Like, it's like, bro, like it's a white dude, you know. So he don't understand. Then he like, your hair ugly. I'm just look at him. I'm like, I don't got no ordinary military cut head ass. Like, come on now, you can't, you can't say that to me. Like, you you got the military cut in in the military, the motherfucker. And I looked at him. I looked at his fit. I'm like, bro, you look like you just got out of prep school. Like, or what? Did you just get off work. We had a bar, like, he had a tie, a sweater vest. I, I was like, bro, you just get out of fret? I know you're older than me. What you doing? Like, <laughs> motherfucker talking about, uh, what you do? He started getting drunk, and then he started talking about, we we started talking about, he was like, oh, what? He started oh. talking about my brother. He's like, how your brother doing? I'm like, why don't you ask him? That's your friend, right? Like, why are you talking to me about my brother? With that being said, talking about my brother, we like to appreciate my brother on the first episode of Tay Talks. Yeah. Tay talks about it. He just forgets that he talks about it, probably because I forget to brought to you by the great man. Yeah, my bad. We got off topic with of talking about my <laughs> family. Worry, and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Lord. And we back. <laughs> Have we been back? We've been back. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> you want that Unga Bunga Dunga? <laughs> <laughs> You know, crazy. No, I heard that. I'm gonna come off the top rope on this motherfucker. Play it again. Yeah, I mean, he's uncle in her ass. Corner, like, uh-huh. like, Skip was saying that he wanted to do some comedy and shit. Oh yeah, uh-huh. yeah. What we having? Uh, what a roast? Nah, my uh, my uncle, Ooh. my uncle. He trying to he trying to come uh to one of the comedy shows. Oh okay, shit, yeah. it's all good to me. Yeah. Okay, well, welcome, uncle. Okay, yeah, so what we gonna yeah. do? Is we're gonna watch some more of this uh amazing documentary film that I done stole it, but with this uh oh, can we do that uh the disclaimer, Tim, please? Before we get sued. It's a folder, it said disclaimer. How y'all liking the episode the, ep- the the episode so far that I had laid out in the folders? <laughs> Copyright disclaimer. At the section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, (laughs) comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarships, and research. Fair use is permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. 
nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips to balance a favor of fair use. So back up off me. Booyaka shot. Let's start the show. Yes, 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 yes. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get a little deeper into what's going on and what's being hidden from us in our history by the powers that be, the powers that don't be, the powers that don't want us to know what's going on. Um, if you guys could think superheroes, what would you guys think? Like Wonder Woman. For why? Wonder Woman is not who they portray her to be to us. Who? Tech Talks? Superman. Well, you, you can leave, but I can still take your... Who? The Woman King. Watch that movie. All right. So listen, I understand I'm losing some viewers watching some of this presentation, but the whole part of this presentation is me knowing where to get this film at. Y'all can't even go go find it. Go find it again. First of all, figure out what the name of this is. Then go find it. Then see how many of these these are, and then see what you can learn. This is the only one that's about war, defense, offense, history of defense and offense, and kicking asses and taking ass weapons. So I wanted to start here and, and regress. So what we're going to do right now is we're not going to start at the end when they started teaching us how to kick people asses. We're going to start at the end where we started kicking ass. And then we... <laughs> Hey, man, we going to fuck some shit up before we go to the beginning of when we was picking cotton and shit on the grapevine, according to my time. Damn it, this is my class. All right. Done. It deals with murder. It deals with a lot of bloodshed. It deals with living in the caves, in the Caucasus Mountains. It deals in eating raw things crawling on the walls. It deals in all of this defecation, not knowing how to bury their dead, not knowing how to stand upright. They crawled on all fours, all of these different things. So their culture wasn't really anything dealing with uh, something that they could leave as a legacy, for instance. So they had to imitate, they had to emulate in order for them to legitimize themselves as a human reality. Well, you know, Dr. Welsing is, is was one of our great warrior queens. Um, and interesting thing, Dr. Welsing's idea is that because Europeans are a tiny minority on planet Earth, they become concerned about being able to maintain themselves on the planet. Because they're concerned, and because it, the simple sex act, she said, could actually wipe them out. So what she said was that um, they created a system of white supremacy and that they put white supremacy into all areas of people activity, which she named education and entertainment, labor, law, politics, etc. And she said that this concern about being able to be killed off was because they lacked melanin. Because if this, again, the simple sex act would bring about a child who was of color. So what Dr. Wells was saying is that they consume these dark things like chocolate and coffee to sort of make up for the missing melanin that's, that they don't have. There's a book called The Delectable Negro that documents the cannibalizing of black people, especially during slavery. It talks about how in white European culture, the white supremacist culture, that they've always had this thing about literally consuming black people, black flesh. During slavery, when they had big rebellion with Nat Turner, he was cannibalized after they killed him. They ate him. Um, during a lot of lynchings, they would cook and barbecue people and they would actually eat the people that they would lynch. So this was something that was a part of the white supremacist culture, consuming us literally. Because they know you are what you eat. So if a white man eat you or eat me, he believes that he becomes us. And I know it's strange because I conquered them, but I'm going to devour what I've conquered. I mean, a lot of the mummies that was taken out of Africa was taken to Europe and sold, and, and they used it as medicine. 
and they used it as aphrodisiacs. They ate our dead people's bodies. Um, and cannibalizing us is nothing new. That whole concept of cannibalism comes from Europe. You don't find any instances of cannibalism in Africa or Asia. Culinary industry, eating children, has always been famous with them. People eat eggs. Egg is the fetus of a, of a chicken, unborn chicken. You eat it. That's why they use eat lambs, unborn lambs, tender meat, and all that sort of stuff. They've always went after the children in animals and in people. This is part of the European culture. Yes, they do it. They do that right now. Uh, those are considered delicacy among certain high groups of Caucasians uh, to eat the black man's heart or his brain. All of those were designed to try to get your strength any kind of way they could. So they felt if they ate your heart or they ate your brain, that they would be able to gain your strength in that way. Listen, we're living in a country right now where 44 of the 50 states still allow the eating of cats and dogs. People don't talk about that because we put that on the Asians. Oh, they eat the cat and dog. No, they not the only ones. You got white people all over this country that's eating cats and dogs, and that's why the law is on the book. That's 44 states. It's still legal to eat cats and dogs. And you know how they love their pets, but they eating them. The central issue here is not the cannibals itself. It's just that they prided themselves on certain parts of the body. If you defeat your enemy, you eat their heart. And today they give a purple heart to soldiers. Uh. Have a cannibal. Oh my God! In the Jim Crow era, they would have foods that would be associated with black people. Who uh, knew these things? Of that now, we see like Uncle Jemima pancakes and Uncle Ben's rice and all that. But ding! Back, if we knew these things, popular of having black people associated with all these I foods finally got today. and black people on the boxes of all these foods. Not just because black people were the cooks. We assumed that they would have black people on these products because they cooked the products. But they had things like nigger head oysters because they said the oysters ding or no like black people. They had. Okay, uh, no ding. Babies, candy, this chocolate candy. They had no ding. Brazil nuts, which were called nigger toes. So this was no ding. Was real popular in the white supremacist culture, relegating black people to edible products in order you to. You know, I always thought that was the name of Brazil nuts. Stop right there. Black flesh. Stop right there. Our Excellent. Are so, so, based off of all these historical things, have you guys ever heard such a term to describe it as any of those candies? Nigger nuts, nigger heads, nigger this, nigger that. Nigger babies. Nigger toes. I always, always, and this comes from my grandmother, my grandfather, my mother, my aunts, my uncles, always called the Brazil nuts nigger toes. Well, yeah. And I always just thought that was the name well, of it. Well, Never happened, knew well, they were Brazil nuts. I well, wonder yeah. who made Snickers. <laughs> the niggas who were responsible for yeah. the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> ain't no niggas did nothing. Oh, I swear nothing. I was over here thinking hey, that in hey, my head hey, too. Hey, 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 hmm. hey, it's the the new guts, the niggas. It's the same shit, fools. It's the same shit. Oh, so. No, no, but that was an excellent point, though. Yeah, I always thought that's what they were called till I got older. And then well, I found out they were Brazil nuts. And I'm like, well, why they call them nigga toes until I seen. Well, a lot of people don't understand what the origin, even uh, uh, um, sugar, uh, nigga sugar babies, babies, sugar babies, sugar babies, it's the same shit. They just repurposed it, right? Like all of these things were even, what do you think we get the name picnic from? Picnic. Pick My dad always told me Barbecue. Yep. That shit. That shit all of these things came from, they was actually eating us for our, like our powers because, you know, scientifically proven our organs all of the things that we have are superior to other races. I'm not saying we better than anybody, especially me, because shit, you don't want my organs. These motherfuckers are shot. I mean, <laughs> you mean? <laughs> Hold on, pause, pause, really quick. Um, talking about uh, what you're talking about, the, the organs and everything, did you see in Massachusetts where they're trying to pass the law that you can get out of jail early if you become Shit. an organ donor and of course what's 90 percent of the race that's locked up is organ, is 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 black so they they're trying to ban it ban it because they're saying it's really organ harvesting yeah they're because not they're cutting time off if you become a quote-unquote organ donor i can't believe none of you've seen that especially you I'm about to change my fucking. First of all, <laughs> I ain't about to be no organ donor. Anymore. First of all, how cute of you to think that I didn't see that? I definitely did. 
But what I wanted to was to get into the next segment of this. Is that cool with you? You know, it's cool with me if you stop smacking in the microphone. And you know, you know, it's crazy though if you think about it. All these people dying, and all these people still waiting on organs. You know what I mean? Why is there still well, a wait let, list let, when let people die something. every day? Let me tell you something. There's a very, very, very rich man who just had eight heart transplants. Like eight. what? Mm-hmm. In like a 10 year span. One of the richest men in the world. My brother in law, my sister's, my niece's dad, Michael Garland, Michael Ray Garland. His father is the coach for the Michigan Wolverines. I mean, not the Michigan, uh, the Michigan Spartans. Sorry, y'all. The basketball team, Coach Garland. That's her fucking granddad. He tripping. That's eight other people it could have went to. He could have just took Bro, the L. You listen, know what I mean? You already that man got had one. A fight. Like, no, he had a fight for his life to get that one. Right? Oh, no, he's talking about the, the guy that had the eight. Yeah, no, I understand that. He but guess, just, what he, guess what he died of? What? Congestive heart failure. After all that, because there's a God somewhere. Dang, motherfucker. There's a God <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> he, he jumped over there like somebody scared him. <laughs> all right, but just take a look at some other shit, man. Let's see what we're talking about. Come on, Jim. Oh, there you go, Ebony. So today on my Black History Niggas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for my Black History today, we are going to do uh the host's grandfather, Earl Bradley. He was California's first black cameraman. To many readers who have asked, it was Earl Bradley, the only black television the only cameraman in the Valley. In the KMJ, Valley. KMJ TV, Jesus. who took the picture of the of the beautiful women that appeared in last month's Grapevines Dressed Women issue. Now, this is this just just so happened to be a coincidence when we, when uh, Michael Dickie. found this. I'm sorry, the host found this My name is and uh, <laughs> he's showing it to me. He's showing it to my mom. He's showing it to everybody. And then five minutes after he starts showing it to now. everybody, we, we noticed that it said grapevine photography. Me and my mother thought that he put that on the picture when in all actuality, that was the name of the magazine that he was working for. So that is our black history for today, Earl Bradley, the very first black cameraman in California. AKA, these niggas been doing this shit, son. AKA, my nieces just did that shit, son. If you watch that video that I just opened to show up with the other day, hey, man, listen, my nieces and them go crazy. Plus, man, we got a whole bunch of, bro. damn, we got some talent in our room. How you get so lucky to marry into our family? I feel like I should charge you a fee. Like uh, no Universal Studios. I should charge you if a this fee is like for a talented the family fee. And the stress and the grays. And the First of all, of you hair. keep the aliens out this shit right here. Okay, you don't win. You're full of shit. Anyhow, speaking of heroes and superheroes and shit, let's see if uh, did anybody realize what's going on right here. Dun dun dun. Boom done it deals with murder it deals with a lot of bloodshed it deals with living in the caves in the car being able to be killed off was because they lacked melanin because if this again the simple sex act would bring about a child who was of color so what Dr. Wellsman was saying is that they consume these dark things like chocolate and coffee to sort of make up for the missing melanin that's, that they don't have. There's a book called The Delectable Negro that documents the cannibalizing of black people, especially during slavery. It talks about how in white European culture, the white supremacist culture, that they've always had this thing about literally consuming black people, black flesh. During slavery, when they had the big rebellion with Nat Turner, he was cannibalized after they killed him. They ate him. 
um, during a lot of lynchings, they would cook and barbecue people and they would actually eat the people that they would lynch. So this was something that was a part of the white supremacist culture, consuming us literally. Because they know you are what you eat. So if a white man eat you or eat me, he believes that he becomes us. And I know it's strange because I conquered them, but I'm going to devour what I've conquered. I mean, a lot of the mummies that was taken out of Africa was taken to Europe and sold, and, and they used it as medicine, and they used it as aphrodisiacs. They ate our dead people's bodies. Um, and cannibalizing us is nothing new. That whole concept of cannibalism comes from Europe. You don't find any instance of cannibalism in Africa or Asia. The culinary industry, eating children, has always been famous with them. That's why people eat eggs. Egg is the fetus of a, of a chicken, unborn chicken. You eat it. That's why they use to eat lambs, unborn lambs, tender meat, and all that sort of stuff. They've always went after the children, in the animals and in people. This is part of the European culture. Yes, they do it. They do that right now. Uh, those are considered delicacy among certain high groups of Caucasians uh, to eat the black man's heart or his brain. All of those were designed to try to get your strength any kind of way they could. So they felt if they ate your heart or they ate your brain, that they would be able to gain your strength in that way. Listen, we're living in a country right now where 44 of the 50 states still allow the eating of cats and dogs. People don't talk about that because we put that on the Asians. Oh, they eat the cat. So with that being said, Otra vez, how do you guys feel about that? You know, oftentimes we're depicted as being, um, you know, they use the pot and the slaves and the witch master, and there's usually somebody in the pot trying to get out that murder, motherfucker. Deals deals you know, and like, no, it's all good. And you know, that's the that's the depiction that they want to portray about us. You know, oh my God, they're cannibals. You know, they're they have to. Uh, kill savages when they come onto their islands or when they come to their territory. And if let's just take time out and think if you had never, ever, let's just say the very first time that you heard about Africans wasn't about them hunting and boiling people, but it was about them. I don't know, maybe, uh, I don't know, looking for a rainbow with a pot of gold, right? Just hold on. Think about it. Let's just say the first time you heard about Africans wasn't in a tribal fashion. It was more like a let's get drunk and let's everybody drink on your ass. And, you know, there's this little guy who chases a rainbow. You would always associate that particular ethnic background with these motherfuckers looking for uh, leprechauns or yeah, drinking. Leprechaun. Right. But instead, they have us thinking about bones, spears, clay huts, little pot belly kids with flies flying around their eyes, and that's the furthest thing from the truth. And, you know, we was more... Like the Egyptians. Yeah, like, I mean, even, yeah, prior to that, I mean, all the way through the lineage, you know, like, if we get, when we, when we get into further of this, they'll show you how we never had a history, and why would you want to eat people when you come from the one continent that has Everything. Every single thing. Man, if I can go get me a mango, a dope ass motherfucker, pomegranate, or some shit like that, or some of this this funky ass tweed. Yeah, I'll never look at somebody and be like, ooh, they look oh good. My God, you know, <laughs> I do I do declare. Well, I mean Nigga, first of all, where the fuck you got this word at? But, she looking like a snack. Yeah. Man, wait a minute. Did he say uh, S. Claire? Not literal, though. Not literal. Not literal. <laughs> S. Claire who? Hey, man, why don't you talk about it, man? Since it's Tay Talk, talk about it, man. Man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're proud to introduce y'all, man. Tay Talk, man. He got it twice tonight. All right, so let me, let me get back on what I was talking about earlier about uh, drunk people, Okay. So I'm at the bar, right? And the mo- I already tell you, he he touched my head. All right, so I'm already salty at the motherfucker. And then he started talking about my brother, and it's like, bro, y'all <coughs> fake friends, low key. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, clearly, you could check up on him. All right. Then so this motherfucker started talking about how much money he made. He trying to brag to me. He like, I make fifty k a year. I could do whatever I want. 
I look at him like, bro, you're just above that. Like, all right, I mean, congrats. You know what I mean? I ain't about to knock nobody hustle. And I'm just like, bro, stop talking to me. I walk away. He come up to me again. He's talking about fighting. And I don't know what it is. That I see he do this with other people, but he only do it when he got people around him type shit. So I'm just looking at him like, bro. I will beat your drunk ass. I just got there. I didn't want to ruin the party. I didn't want to ruin the party. It was off for my friend's birthday. You know what I mean? Like, I just look at him. I look at my one friend because he he see what's going on. I'm just like, bruh, should I beat his ass real quick? You know what I mean? So, it, and really, these drunk people, Thank they don't me. know. They don't know. Like, <laughs> I just got there. I'm sober. I, I done fought drunk. I don't know about y'all. It ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't the <laughs> you know what it. You know what it ain't? <laughs> It is not no more time for Tay Talks tonight. He did an extra job. <laughs> Way better than listen, this actually no Tim Laughing. Tay, good job tonight, bro. We got a little tight bit of a schedule. But if y'all enjoyed it. that, we're gonna keep doing it. Plus, if you don't like it, if you don't like nothing we're talking about, talk about what Tay talking about. Man, you don't gotta like grape. You know, man, listen, that's my young bull, man. We don't got not a hating bone in our body, not so much. Her, but me, I definitely don't. You know, should be tripping. He's been a hater since I met him. (laughs) Hey, baby, qué pasó? Hey, don't try to get me to touch your down there. What am I looking at? Good job, good job, Ebony. (laughs) Ebony, you on camera? Oh shit, I'm on camera. Hey, baby, que paso? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, play that. <laughs> Not as much as I'm going to be with Dave. See this shit, Jack. <laughs> he ain't seen nothing. Uh-huh. Dave, we like to thank you for watching all the sponsors. We love it. Because I ain't nobody really do nothing. It's hard to see it because my wife dry snitched on me. Brought to you by uh, DJ Productions and, uh, an association. With your wife is a good wife. You should just realize she got you. You just like that shit. I got the picture when she squeezed your boobs and what happened next. Man, listen, this nigga had on some Oshkosh Bagashes. First of all, <laughs> where the fuck you find Oshkosh Bagashes in your size, nigga? I got it print press, nigga. <laughs> Whatever, it was Oscars by, oh my gosh, it's by the time my wife had squeezed your tits twice. I sold it myself. <laughs> and again, I, had a, I spent the day with again, the CEO. And again, I told you, if you sell anything of yours on a grapevine, I won't lie. <laughs> I don't even know what button to press. <laughs> <laughs> you better press the white one, baby. You better press the white one. Listen. Uh, you, if, if you choose one, you lose one. If it ain't the right one, maybe can you dig it? Everybody share for a minute. Yes, and and you ain't gotta have no chicken dinner because you couldn't fuck around and end up with my man over there, Leonard. Can you? And everybody go to Tim's OnlyFans page, Cuddle Bucks. Cuddle Bucks. Hey, hey, Cuddle Bizzle. Cuddle Bizzle. For Shizzle Nizzle. For Cuddle Buck, too. Two. Two. Speaking of that, uh, www. I want my cut, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't looking for no pimp, <laughs> but he fucked around, and we ain't no simp together. We decided it was two niggas with titties come together and join this committee to where we can get some uh, 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 cash like this. Take that, take that, take that, take that. Bad boy, baby. Yeah. No, red line. <laughs> they gonna have to pull one or two of them to these out. I hope they both are perpendicular. Red to line <laughs> radio. <laughs> red Dave, line radio the, after You dark. can't have one nipple up here and one nipple down here. You got really, you know, Are we on red line radio we, after we, dark? We, fuck, I'm gonna get fired again. Fuck. I didn't even help. Do nothing. Emily, stop touching me up there. Anyhow, can we play the next video, please? <laughs> Red Line Radio after dark. <laughs> Done. It deals with murder. It deals with a lot of bloodshed. It- it's just that they prided themselves on certain parts of the body. If you defeat your enemy, you eat their heart. And today they give a purple heart to soldiers. 
coming out of cannibalism. During the Jim Crow era, they would have foods that would be associated with black people. Um, we see the remnants of that now. We see like Aunt Jemima pancakes and Uncle Ben's rice and all that. But even back then, that was very popular of having black people associated with all these foods. Or, or courage or ferocity. So it was no thing to kill a lion to eat its heart if I believe that the ferocity of the lion is in his heart. So I'll eat the lion heart, and then I'll call myself Richard the Lionheart. I'm ferocious, I'm powerful, like that lion that I devoured. And cannibalism is nothing new to the European. In fact, if you go to Germany, this is an absolute fact, you can look it up. Uh, you can legally eat somebody so long as that person consents to it. It's a fact. <laughs> In Germany, you can legally eat someone so long as the person being eaten consents to it. Now, when, when you see a law like that, then you have to consider, is the German a German? Is he a German man? Is this guy uh, a manifestation or a man infestation? Around 1885 to around 1908, the Belgians, they forced Congolese men to harvest rubber, ivory, and diamonds. And they have quotas. And if they did not meet that quota, the wives and the children of those men would have their hands cut off and sometimes their feet too. After King Leopold had his people chop off the hands of African people in the Congo, in Belgium, they made it a practice of selling these chocolate hands that they would eat. So there's always been this culture within white supremacy of consuming blackness in the most vile ways. Okay, now today you have what? Organ trafficking, organ harvesting. Why? Because our organs still to date still prove to be the most functional. Uh, they resist diseases at the highest rate. They will keep you living longer, a whole lot longer. So everything dealing with our organs, our spirituality, us as a people, genetically, biochemically, they attribute it to everything dark from the clothing to the food to the coffee. All of it, everything dark. I have to take it because it will make me more powerful. I don't want none white. See, we want white. As Brother Malcolm said, you know, you want to integrate your coffee with a little bit of cream. It'll go down easy. See, because that black is a little too strong, it's a little too harsh. No, they like black coffee. They want, they want it, they want it straight black. White women want straight black. Now we're aware that during slavery and Jim Crow, the white supremacists would cannibalize black bodies. Now let's fast forward to a couple of decades ago. You had somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. All right, now we just watched the Jeffrey Dahmer black men, um, and he series. Would dismember their bodies. Pay attention. He would literally cook and eat the bodies of these black men. Oh, What's interesting about Jeffrey Dahmer, not only was he cannibalizing and dismembering black people, Jeffrey Dahmer worked at a chocolate factory in Milwaukee. So it was Absolutely. his desire for blackness and chocolate and melanin. It was not only symbolic, it was very literal. So he was the only one who really got caught in modern times. How many other people are doing this? And I truly sincerely believe that all of these murders happening with the police and all these different things, they are organ stealing because white people are dying out. The United States Census Bureau stated Pause right there, that please. by the year 2032, America- 2032. <laughs> now, basically what he's saying right now, Brother Rizzo, is uh, they have a thing called Agenda 2030. It's, you know, a depopulation thing to where, you know, we're going to have to knock off a whole bunch of people for a whole bunch of different reasons, whether it's climate change. They didn't COVID. take the jab. They took the jab. They fought the jab. They fought each other. You know, anyhow, by that time, they want to have a whole different demographic. Uh, black, white, other LGP, QT, LMNP, all the rest of them. You know what I mean? No judging anybody. Anybody, any, you feel me? But that's what they want. Because what's the ultimate population control? Think about this. If you entice a whole fucking population, a whole, it's like the Beatles in the 60s when they fucking mesmerized the whole culture to believe in rock and roll. And then the culture after them. 
believed in the 70s and they believed in all that shit. Then in the 80s, they believed in rock and roll and all that shit. And then in the 90s, people like us believed in gang banging music. They get motherfuckers to believe the whole culture. Man, listen, when you were, when you can entice the whole culture like that, bro, that's power. That's what like that's how you influence somebody. No matter what the fuck, yo, whatever it is, let's just say like this: we sitting here. Let's say like we all playing basketball. Boom! You say, okay, I'm the best motherfucker at the table. I'm best motherfucker at the table. Mm-hmm. Tim said it first, right? Tim has a dope ass league. Everybody following his league, like whoa, 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 he might be a little bit older, so he's like your OG best. So like he kind of your best because he was your daddy best. You know it's okay. That's that's happening with my cousin right now. He up from Tennessee right now. I'm about to play him one on one. I'm about to post that shit. That's how I play. I mean, I mean, play basketball all the time. <laughs> nigga, I be swatting a little shit. I be like, yeah, motherfucker, in your yeah. face, little ass nigga. Who you? Before or after you take a puff on your inhaler? <laughs> Baby, don't talk about my ass blown the goddamn air. Fuck! Can't pause this shit, <laughs> Here, let me blow this balloon up for you. No sports. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he used to be able to. He's too old now to be out there. I mean, he tries. I give it to him. He went out there with uh with with them boys a, a few months ago and played some football. football. Them boys is called the Trappy Leagues. Them squads are called uh, semi-pro players. This player was called the nigga who was disturbing shit in the backfield with a touchdown. Hell it, uh, Disrupting the herb. And then went to the hospital later because he had an asthma attack. Damn. I didn't just have it. I had it the whole day before. No, no, no. <laughs> she makes it seem like I just got out there with like <laughs> No, no. I have played the whole game, but I had an asthma attack the whole week before that. Okay. So like I was on the air having an asthma attack. I don't know. And everyone's like, no, you better not go. Who it is? He smokes cigarettes. Man tripping. Man, he fake smokes. That's what I need to talk about. But what I did fake, fake smoke was that quarterback so. on the field, nigga. Speaking of that, man, we all, I mean, man, we got one more game to the Super Bowl. Trap, hey, Trap Boy Mannequin. Tell them niggas put that cleats on, cause you seen what I did out there. I'm talking about. In fact, me and Dre, nigga, me and Dre Bo, nigga, I'm on a quarterback ass. I'm causing so much disturbance. Dre getting all the interceptions. Shout what I be big as hell, nigga. But I'm fast though. <laughs> oh God, I'm, nigga. And then they didn't know I could catch. I didn't say shit because they didn't want me to play at first, right? Yeah. So I said I ain't gonna say shit until it's like playtime, right? There's uh African American history culture right here for you, right? So yeah, I said you know I'm gonna shut up, man. We got out here, we doing warm ups and shit. I wasn't doing nothing, that. man. Then the motherfucker started boom. I was turning around. Turn around, grab another one. Turn around, grab one. You start hearing it. You caught another one. Yeah, that's right, nigga. Grape and catch. <laughs> Damn it, nigga. Boy, we, it was me and I, I don't know who remember, uh, who the other nigga was, but man, it was me and this one other nigga. I ain't gonna lie. We was old, <laughs> but we did great. Was. You still are. I was going to say. You ain't got young yet. <laughs> How old is you? That's the mama. He 25 <laughs> as of Wednesday. That's my baby. <laughs> so I've got, man, listen, I'm acting like a 25-year-old. Moving, grooving, cat-like reflexes. <laughs> I jumped off a nigga helmet one time and caught the ball in the air. Hey, it's all in the mind. Look at Brian. Look at Brian. Look at Brian. Right. If it's all in the mind, you can do whatever the fuck you want, nigga. Who shit, nigga? He still think he has hair up there. I don't know why. I don't know who told him he has hair up there, but he doesn't. LeBron? Yes, LeBron. No, I'm not talking about you. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. Because I know that's what you thought. Whatever. Okay, um, yeah, let's see where we at so we can keep talking shit about what I'm not sure we're talking shit about. (laughs) Push play, nigga. <laughs> Bush play, nigga.
for me if I'm white. That means I need to do something right now so I can live as long as possible. Hence why most of them are trying to switch to a healthier lifestyle. They're trying to go vegan, vegetarian. They're trying to exercise more. They specialize in eating us. A lot of us were sold just as culinary things during the slave trade. But we just focus on this chain and stuff, but a lot of us were just good eat. And a lot of Europeans got in the slave trade for the eating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they cooked it. They were actually cooking black eat. people. They, they hung you up, but they had a fire underneath you. They were cooking us and selling the oil. They sold Nat Turner's oil as an aphrodisiac right here in America. In European culture, a lot of the heroes and the deities and the, the superheroes, they are co-opted from, from African heroes, African deities and African gods. They've always done that. They've always co-opted a lot of our culture as far as heroes. And when you look at a lot of these comic book characters, you will see uh, an African influence. I like to look at the, the comic book character who is perhaps most popular, the most recognized comic book character, even to those who are not actually into comic books. And that would have to be Superman. Superman is clearly a sun god. It's a sun god myth. He gets his power from the sun. And in fact, as things move forward and this, and this mythos around Superman moves forward, some people might be surprised that the patron deity on Krypton, How many the place where is? Superman comes from, his name is Rao. Rao. Clearly they're referencing Ra or Ray, Let's take a look the at comedic deity. Who might be when you there? look at a lot of white superheroes, a lot of them are based yeah. on the myth of the Norse god or the, the Aryan god. god or the, um, white supremacist deities mm -hmm. uh, like Superman. A lot of that came about during the eugenics movement. Uh, the He-Man character, when you look at the old He-Man cartoons, you'll see he has a symbol that is associated with the Aryan white supremacist doctrine. Even on Superman's chest, it was an actual pyramid turned upside down with a snake I love it when there's in the form or shape of an X. The See, they switched that whole thing around. It's like, wait a minute, his name was Kyle El. That's a Hebrew name. He gets power from the sun, which requires melanin. melanin. That means you have to be black. The story of Pinocchio, which took a turn around Take the turn of the this. century, around 1900. This was Cools after the, the Italians had a war with King Menelik of Ethiopia, and they lost against these African people. So the Italian people wanted to get literary revenge. So what they did with the Pinocchio story, they created a comic book where Pinocchio went to Africa. He became the leader of the Africans. They showed the Africans in very negative and stereotypical ways with the bones in their noses. So Pinocchio was over here ruling people in Africa. Pinocchio ended up painting himself black, then he got enslaved, and then he washed the paint off, and then he swam back to Italy. So these racist type of narratives were actually taught in school. The first place that this woman warrior is referred Stop. to as Amazon is not in the Caribbean, Stop. not in South America. <clears throat> I would like to hear everybody's thoughts around the table based on because what are your initial thoughts on the fairy tale Pinocchio as portrayed by Disney? And now that you understand where it really comes from, what are your thoughts now on the whole story, Pinocchio, Ebony? I want to be a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably be saying, fuck, we're going to get canceled. Fuck. Go. I, mean, don't <laughs> I I never really was a Pinocchio lover, so I I know the basic story of Pinocchio, and then I know the Shrek version of Pinocchio. <laughs> so okay, that's fine. I'm no, not. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Tim is the only two I know, and I'll get mad if somebody would be like, Tim, you're Pinocchio because I'm lying or something. Oh, that's bitch. cool. Tim. That's all I know. <laughs> so, based on the fact that you were indoctrinated, think about this. You never knew, you had a blank slate when it came to this particular Pinocchio character who was indeed a person in real life depicted off of ancient history, our history, right? But your initial introduction to this particular cat was this. You'd be like, oh my God, he was a righteous dude. Cuz was cool with me. But in all actuality, he went over there and it was slave people when it take over Africa. 
painted himself black so he could look more like the ruler. Then when they came and got cuz, it was like, hey, motherfucker, round up with the rest of them. Sure. Now you want to take the paint off and swim your ass back across where the fuck you came from. Italy, by the way, which Pinocchio. Pino is not nah, Pino. And uh, Kyo is time. And I got that information from uh, Santos Bonacci. If y'all don't know who Santos Bonacci is, push the ding, ding, ding other times for cuz. I suggest y'all watch Santos Bonacci. You ain't got to listen to me. You ain't got to listen to him. I don't listen to him. I still go looking for other shit. But it's only a few other people I can look behind him for this. Jordan Maxwell being one. These nuts being the other. <laughs> <laughs> he really thought about it, though. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. All right, man. Uh, where was we at? I forgot what I'm saying. Oh, shit. My, you know what? My mama bear. Have you seen Puss and Boots? No, nobody's seen Puss and like Boots yet. Puss and Boots. You got to say it all seductive and shit like that. And don't even need us. Have you seen the Puss and Boots? <laughs> now you about to see this motherfucker tonight, baby. Give me some of the honey, Tim. I said, hit me with the honey, Tim. One time for the... Uh, uh. Two time for the high, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Damn, Tim, Tim hit me hard as fuck with that honey. Pause. 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 Lord have mercy on his soul. <laughs> Shout out to Chris. Okay, my wife, she's been doing such a dope job, but she's such a beautiful host. And plus, shout out to her. She just recently had a birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. the ship. <laughs> you must have a temper tantrum. Yes, and my husband recently had a birthday Wednesday. Happy oh, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Stop, stop dancing. Stop. Mm-mm. Not one of your strong suits. What about this? Not one of your, not one of your strong suits. How the fuck I'm supposed oh. to walk to that? Cuz I'm just like, whoop, whoop. He can still turn it into song. <laughs> no. Stop it. No, on with the show. <laughs> and not that show. <laughs> You should try having your own show. Tim, I kind of do because I am Tim, a co-host. Here. Tim, on with the show. Would Let you? them know. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. motherfucker want to rap. On with the show. Done. Oh. It deals with murder. It deals with a lot of bloodshed. It deals with living in the cave. Fuck! Oh, my just stomped in my foot. Hell hard. <laughs> oh! Tim. Oh, my God. Put her camera back on, please. One time for the one time. Everybody's camera's on. Mm-hmm. Ebony, that's a very valuable shoe you just stepped on. Fuck. I Ooh, bought it. Was that the J's? I bought it. Over oh, it ain't the J's. I just, dude, I was just an actor getting jocked for these shoes by. By what? <sighs> and now we are going to talk about. Madam C.J. Walker. I'm not sure if everybody knows who she is or knows anything she- about her, but she is a self-made millionaire. <laughs> Madam C.J. Walker, born Sarah Breedlove on December 23rd, 1867 in the Louisiana Delta. Madam C.J. Walker transformed herself from an uneducated farm laborer and laundress into one of the 20th century's most (laughs) successful self-made woman entrepreneurs. After marrying at the age of 14 and having a daughter, Sarah found herself widowed at 20. She began experimenting with hair products as a way to control a scalp ailment. She began selling Malone's products when she moved to Denver in 1905. After a short second marriage, Sarah married Charles Joseph Walker in 1906. Encouraged to start her own business, 
She changed her name to Madam C.J. Walker and started selling Madam C.J. Walker's Wonderful Hair Grower. To promote her products, Madam Walker traveled and sold her products door to door, demonstrating her scalp treatments. After visiting Indianapolis in 1910, she decided to move the Madam C.J. Walker Manufacturing Co Company headquarters to the city. The year she set up a, a laboratory and beauty school and made plans to establish a large scale manufacturing facility along Indiana Avenue. Eight years after her death, the Madam Walker building, the theater open and building and theater opened in December 1927. It housed a drugstore, a beauty salon, a beauty school, a restaurant, a professional office, a ballroom and a 1500 seat theater. Still standing, it is listed on the National Register of Historical Places. When Madam Walker died in 1919, she left a legacy of not only a successful businesswoman, but also a philanthropist and civil rights activist. Among her many, <laughs> oh my goodness, activities, she denoted, donated funds. You would think I was drunk. She donated <laughs> funds to establish a YMC, YMCA in Indianapolis. She, didn't, she donated to the Tuskegee Institution and other African-American schools and began schools to teach her system of selling her company's products, allowing many African-American women to become independent business women. In 1916, she became heavily involved in Harlem Society and the NAACP anti-lynching campaign while living in New York. Madam C.J. Walker, um, there is uh, a show on uh, Netflix that uh, was produced by LeBron James. Um, it's a really, it's really good short series. It's really, really good. Excellent. So Excellent. you need to watch that. Um, fun fact, uh, Madam CJ Walker is, are, uh, is noted in the history books of being the first motherfucker to say, let me straighten the shit out. She laid some edges for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wanted your on, edges laid hey, back then. That's where you needed to go. Hey. If that flew over your head, please push the unfollow button. <laughs> we don't need your types around these pots. <laughs> Here, we'll straighten that picture. Baby, that was dope. I hated the end of shit with my... Oh, no. Effortless effervescence or whatever it is. A lot of people that. don't know about her. Like I said, uh, LeBron James did a, a series on her on Netflix. It's it's really good. It's it's worth the, the time to sit down and actually watch it. I've watched it a couple times. Check the Jumanji. The Jumanji never lies. And that right, Justin George. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Shout out to Justin George and them, man. They got a dope ass sponsorship, man. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but I'm about to tell y'all in one minute. It's called uh, Best Stamp. Best Stamp, the app. Bet with your people in them. And they have a dope ass show, too. And they have a dope ass show, too. Talking about balls Talking about on balls. Wednesdays. So I got the picture of you squeezing Tim nipple the other night. Then this nigga had a nerve to get a hard on while he was standing next to you. My nipple's always hard, to be fair. My I know you're not hard. talking. Your nipples stay hard 24-7. Don't tell these people my business on this goddamn show. It's like you have a, a, a nipple problem. A nipple disorder or something. What the fuck you keep I keep telling you don't touch them. And you insist I don't on have to touch them. Exactly, motherfucker. So why you insist on doing it? You know because they, she wish she could rub on your, on your nipples like she rubbed by. <laughs> I'm about to shoot every motherfucker up in this bitch. <laughs> white boy, run. <laughs> Shit. Ain't no white boys in here. <laughs> right? You got that one tip, nigga? Turn the lights off and lock the door, goddamn it. Lock the goddamn door. Hey, like they said, he glow black. <laughs> hey, Ultra light. So as soon as we turn hey. the lights off, He's, hey, he's if black. there was snow on that nigga, dive out the window naked. Like, what the fuck? I, there's no trace of him. There's no trace of him. <laughs> Speaking of no trace, yeah, no. fuck 007 on the goddamn Xbox. I hate that fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> you be getting your ass whooped. No, fuck that. Bro, I came from many nights selling a lot of drugs, crack cocaine. Nigga, not base rock, crack Cocaine, nigga. So crack. Okay, get to the point. Crack. 007 was a shit back then, nigga. 
We used to sit up all night so the crack, 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 crack. You know what we did? We told crack. You know what else we did? We did people who ever came over there to try to stop us from selling crack. We crack back. And that was that with the crack. But fuck 007, because we sat there all night playing crack over some shit that was whack. And that's just that. Because I swear, man, I got a man, listen, one of my little brothers, man, I work with. Man, I confiscated my whole fucking uh, machine behind that shit, cuz. The air. I whooped your ass. What was Oh, okay. <coughs> Get my hand Psych! Nigga, I whipped your ass the other night, nigga. That is how many times. Anyhow. Yeah, um. <coughs> Mm-mm. I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> it was too funny. Tim, play the last goddamn segment of this shit before we leave, please. Because I just forgot what I was about to say, but it was funny. <laughs> it all no, connected. It Shut deals up. with murder. It deals with yes, murder. Bullshit. It deals with living in the cave. <laughs> Oh my in the Caribbean, not in South America, but in Dahomey, by the French, who have invaded and get there behind oh, yes. by an army of women. And it wasn't that these women were big, extraordinary women. No, they were just as beautiful and exotic as any African women, but they were trained to fight and defend their nation state, defend their culture, and defend their integrity. The Wonder Woman myth was based on the Amazonian women of Dahomey. The writer of Wonder Woman, William Marston, he was the creator of it. So he got the myth from the Amazon women of Dahomey. These women were the ones who beat the French. When the French went to Africa, these Amazon women beat the brakes off the French. The French had to go back to France and say, hey, look, we got beat by these women. And in order to justify it, they say, yeah, we got beat, but these women were 10 feet tall. They were huge. So the myth of the giant Amazon woman was born out of that. They moved that myth over to Greece, saying that the women were these big Greek women with superpowers. And so that's where Wonder Woman comes in. Now, the person who created Wonder Woman, William Marston, he was connected with Margaret Sanger in the eugenics movement. As a matter of fact, one of the women that William was dealing with was Olive Byrne, who was Margaret Sanger's cousin. And Margaret Sanger was the woman who created Planned Parenthood and eugenics, and she wanted to sterilize black women. So there's always that little connection there. In one of the Wonder Woman cartoons, they had a very racist comic book episode where Wonder Woman went over to Africa and these African Bushmen were chasing her around and the African Bushmen were somehow connected with the Nazis. They had swastikas on their loincloths and there was a lot of rape innuendo and there was a lot of sexual undertones to this comic book. And they were sending these little subliminal messages to each other that there's this black threat against white women being sexually involved with black men. So the Wonder Woman cartoons really touched on that. Even the creators, Stan Lee and others, will tell you, Jack Kirby and those folks that were really controlling and telling X-Men stories in the 1960s, they will tell you that they were actually drawing a a commentary on the modern movement for freedom for African-Americans. So on one hand, they depicted um, uh, Charles Xavier, Professor X that many know him as, as a Martin Luther King type character someone who actually wanted to have freedom for his people, but did not want to take overly militant actions to fight for it. And then when they depicted the Magneto character, Eric Lyncher, they decided that they were going to make him sound like he was a revolutionary. And so you actually hear those people that told those initial stories say they were contrasting El Haj Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King. Another comic book character that many people believe is inspired by African deities is the comic book character Thor. Thor has the hammer and the lightning, and that's based off Shango, the African god that had the hammers and the lightning. Um, Another comic book character that people believe is based off um, West African deities is Wolverine. Wolverine has the metal hands. Many people believe that that is based off of Ogun, the West African deity, the god of metal, the god of iron. In the comic book series Wolverine, Wolverine's teacher is named Ogun. So it's not a stretch of the imagination here. White folk are comfortable talking about social commentary when they're able to abstract it. 
We see something similar as, as Star Trek, which is a very popular series with, with an absolute cult following even today. And we see that they were also telling stories that have to do with the civil rights movement and, and the black power movement in their depiction. There's a very famous um, uh, uh, storyline where there are people that come from one planet well, I don't know how many of y'all knew any of that, but to me, it's very interesting. I wouldn't advise taking my advice or like, you know, looking at all that stuff. But mind you, we're hearing about this stuff, not from one, not from two, but like from four or five, the same story from different reputable scholars, not no conspiracy theorists. Not no, hey, he's in the book this week for giving this. Because all the theory is is idea. Like, what's your, you know, your thought? Conspiracy, we're like, you know, that's a whole CIA term. But, you know, like, we're talking about things that are accurate. Like, you have to, like, just ask yourself, like, what do you think of me? I, I think that um, if you didn't watch this, you wouldn't know. You would have never knew that Wonder Woman came from Africa. You would have never knew Thor came from Africa. You wouldn't none of these Professor superheroes. X. Professor X is a, a mock of Malcolm X. I mean not Malcolm X, uh Martin Luther King and Magneto is uh I mean uh, and I this ain't and it looks Malcolm X. This is not something that we're hearing. This is what they're admitting to that these are who they base it, they contrast characters off of. Mm -hmm. I heard about the Black Panther that was based off the well, Black Panther. Yeah, I knew yes. about the Black Panther well, for guess sure. What? Yeah. This is part one. We got another episode, part two, because we probably only, I wish I can do this all year. There's a lot to learn. But there's so much behind we could this. We talk about it all month. And we could talk mm -hmm. about this all fucking because. I mean, but if you ain't never heard this and this is your first time ever getting close to any of this information, thank you because I'm the one who bought this infotainment to your You're info welcome. nation. Can you dig it, baby? Thank you for my co-host, my beautiful wife, Mama Bear. Y'all should go see Puss in Boots. I am not Mama Bear. Puss in Boots. Uh, thank you for Tay Talks. Tell them where they can find you at again. Tay Too Funny on IG. Take too funny on IG. Yes, make sure you follow him. To make sure you follow me, Tim. Where can we find you at, Tim? You can find me at OnlyFans.com slash Cuddlebug. Fuck you, Justin George. But if not I'll on there, to, hey, if that motherfucker was in the front of the ship going like this, I'll be that nigga right in the back of him paddling. Come on, boss. Hold on. Where else can we find you, Tim? Timbuk2 underscore 31 on Instagram and TikTok. Anywhere else? Tim D. Washington Jr. on Facebook. <laughs> Anything else? Motherfucker, where can I find your square? You could there? probably find me at Popeyes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a church that's right by my house. I mean, right by my job. There. Bro, For real? Fuck yeah. nigga, yeah. Bro, when I get I'll off be the there in a minute, at least. <laughs> Man, <you laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> Speaking of that, Growing Wings Studio to Adult Services. Uh, shout out to Lisa for being a bad motherfucker and being the balls on top of all that. Uh, www. Uh, these balls on your chin. What would you have? Chin us. Uh, www. The balls. What, uh, what would you have? A dick in your throat. Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> Get out there and go vote, baby. Can you dig it? Uh, speaking of happy birthday, that was damn near the worst day. I was just playing. What? Matter of fact, I'm Thursday. Tim, cut this motherfucker off. She hit me. Oh, <laughs>